We're going to look at Math Pace 1079, and I want to go over the first checkup, pages 19 and 20, and kind of review before we do the checkup some of the content that was covered in the first several pages. And uh, but there's a lot in here. Um, a lot of students have trouble, even in high school with doing problems with fractions, or doing problems with decimals, or doing problems with percents. <laughs> and it gets really confusing when we have to go back and forth between all three. And uh, so if this chapter seems a little bit confusing, a little bit overwhelming, don't, don't feel intimidated, right? That's normal. So let's, let's review uh, some of the procedures that we would use. I like to encourage students to make a cue card and memorize these, I call them reference numbers. So the F stands for fraction, D for decimal, P for percent. Notice if I have the fraction 51 over 100, that would be the same as 51 hundredths, or 0.51. So notice all I did was move the decimal twice and I have 0.51. Once I have it as a decimal, 51 hundredths, just move the decimal to the right twice and I have a percent. It's always twice, okay? So let's, um, let's say we start with a fraction like one fourth. And I wanna figure out what that is as a decimal. So what we would do is put the one under the doghouse, as I like to say, Divide by four, the top number always goes under the doghouse, and we're dividing by this number. Then I don't see a decimal next to that one. So the way to remember it is we always put a decimal after the number, just like you put a period after a sentence, all right? Then I'm gonna tack some zeros on, and then when I divide, get eight, subtract 20, four goes into 25, so the answer would be 0.25. We can do that with any fraction. Take the top number, put it underneath, divide by the bottom number, and you'll get a decimal, okay? Then we move the decimal twice, and we have the percent, okay? So that's pretty easy. Let's try <clears throat> starting with a decimal, 0 0.4, and I want to turn it into, first of all, a fraction. Well, we recognize that this number is four tenths. That's the decimal, four tenths. So if I first write four tenths, then I can reduce it and have two fifths. Okay? But going from here to the decimal to the percent, let's notice that all we have to do is same thing as our pattern here, move the decimal twice. Always twice. No more than twice, no less. So even though I only have one decimal place, the answer is not four percent. I move it twice and get 40%, okay? That's one of the things I like about math, is there's some rules that always, always, always work. And with percents to decimals, it's always move the decimal twice. All right, let's look at um, a problem similar to what you're gonna have on the checkup here in this first section. And I'm not gonna give you the same problem that they have, but one that's similar. It says, can change these fractions into decimals. So here's eight divided by 25, all right? So again, I'll put the eight under the doghouse and tack some decimals on, some zeros I mean. Divide by 25, put my decimal above. Three times 25 is 75, subtract 50, 25 goes into 50 twice. So this answer would be 0 0.32. Okay, so that's pretty easy. It gets a little more challenging when they have a mixed number in front. But let's try this. 6 times 8 is 48, plus 3 is 51. So I'll put the 51 underneath, put our decimals, divide by 3, excuse me, divide by um, 8. There we go. <laughs> All right, so 6 times 8 is 48, subtract, and we get 3, 30, so 8 times 4 would be 32, that's too much, times 3 is 24, bring that down and we get 6, all right, 8 times 7 is 56, 
bring it down and we have 40. So 6.375. Um, now I'm looking at the directions on page 19 and I notice that it says write any remainders as fractions in lowest terms. So we need to change this because I carried it out a little further and brought an extra zero down. So what we should have done, excuse me, what I should have done is when I got to this point, All right, so we had the 60, we subtracted the 56. Because 7 times 8 was 56, and we had the 4 left over. Then we would actually stop, bring the 4 up, and make it 4 eighths. And then that can reduce and become 1 half. And then because we're turning this into a percent, then we move the decimal twice. So it would be 637 and a half percent. All right? So we first do the division carried out only to two decimal places. Whatever's left over, put it as a remainder over the divisor, and then move the decimal twice and you're done. Okay? So that's just a reminder about how to do problems like four through nine. All right, let's look at um, another type of problem on this checkup. They have a problem like this, a mixed number with a, decimal, with a fraction in there, and it's supposed to be a percent. And we're supposed to convert this into a fraction, in this case, is what they said. All right? <clears throat> All right, I'm going to clear some space here to solve this one. So the first step that we need to do is multiply the 3 times 17, and then we're going to add 1. So 17 times 3, 21, 51, plus the 1, all right? So we end up with 52 over 3. Now that's percent, okay? <clears throat> Now, to convert from a percent all the way over here to a fraction, notice that even with our reference one here, I could take just the number 51 and multiply it times 1 over 100 and have 51 over 100, and that would be the answer, 51 hundredths. So I'm going to do the same thing with 52 over 3, multiply it by 1 over 100, and we end up with 52 over 300. Now once in a while you can reduce this. In fact, I think um, both of these could be divided by looks like at least two. Let's see what we would get here. Um, 26 over 150 and it looks like we could reduce that again and get 13 over 75. So I divided by 2 on both of these and then took both of these divided by 2. Now I have a fraction for that one. All right. Now let's take 178. It's three digits. 178%. And we're supposed to write it as a decimal. So let's look at our reference numbers here. From, to, from a percent to a decimal, notice that we just move the decimal and it's twice again, always twice. So the decimal is back here at the end. If you don't see it, it's at the end. So if I take 178, move the decimal twice, I'll get 1.78. And that would be the decimal number. So the percent is 178, the decimal would be 1.78. Let's do one more. Let's take a percent problem, 5 and 7 thirtieths, and turn that into a decimal number. All right, 
So first of all, we take the 30 times 5, which would be 150 plus 7. It's 157. Leave that over the 30. All right. Then because this is a decimal, we multiply by 1 over 100. So I have 157 over 3,000. Now let me look at the directions here and see what they tell us. Um, if we're going to decimal, they say round to four decimal places. So I don't know how far this is going to go. Let's try it. We'll put the 157 and we'll add several decimal places. We're going to divide by 3,000. Okay. So 3 goes into 15 five times. So let's see. We'll do this over here on the side just to show you, all right? 0, 0, 0, 15. So 1, 5, 1, 2, 3. So I have to come straight up here, and that's where I put the 5, okay? Now notice that the decimal always goes straight up, and there's a gap in between these. So I have to fill that in with a 0. Now when I subtract, I get 7, 1, 2, bring down another 0. How many times will 3,000 go into 7,000? And the answer is twice. 6, 1, 2, 3, subtract, get 1,000, bring down another 0. How many times will 3,000 go into 10,000? And the answer is 3. And that would be 9. 1, 2, 3. And I think I see a pattern happening here. Okay? So I have 1,000. If I were to bring down another 0, it's just going to be another 3. And that's going to just continue. All right? So this is a repeating number. Now the directions say to stop with four decimal places. So I'll count over. 1, 2, 3, 4. Stop right here. If this is more than five, five or more, then I'll round this one up. But since this is less than five, then this would be the answer right here, and we would leave it at that. All right? I hope this helps you a little bit, and um, I would suggest writing down these reference uh, on a 3 by 5 card, kind of keep it with you. And you can use that while you're doing the checkup, just to kind of remember which steps you need to do in what order and how many decimal places to move things, when to put it over 100. All right? Um, I hope you do well in this checkup.